Sarah Akbar, Chairperson and CEO of OilServe Kuwait and non-executive director of Petrofac. Sarah, what does this mean for the Gulf? I mean, Mark mentioned there that uh, Europe needs to stand united, uh, US, Europe axis, the Western axis. But surely this is a responsibility of the whole world. The Middle East now can no longer really stand on the sidelines of this one, or can they? Gulf oil producers going into an OPEC meeting, OPEC plus meeting next week with Russia. Will they have to take a position on this, do you think? Well, good morning, Sean. So I think, you know, the implications of this is even bigger than the Middle East. I mean, think of this, if the world stands and does nothing about this, uh, China will take Taiwan tomorrow. What will stop them? So it will add to more disability, uh, uh, you know, instability on a world level. So that's why the whole world have to react to this aggression and try to mitigate and stop it somehow. And I think the the kind of diplomacy that the Middle East at this point in time plays should have a role into trying to bring some sense into this, to Russia. So I think there will be side discussions on this. And don't forget the reaction, the immediate reaction to this aggression was the oil prices jumped to 100. And probably if there are any kind of sanctions on Russia, it will be even much more and the world will be even in, in a bigger trouble. So many elements to balance in this picture and I believe that you know Saudi and the uh, the other members of OPEC will have to do some kind of trying to convince Russia to stop at a certain you know you know at a certain point and not continue. And you know, basically they will do two two things. One, they will step up production so that they can compensate for any losses and maybe uh, you know ease off uh, the the, the uh, energy market. So they do need to step up and try to produce more, but in the same time, they do have to utilize this special relationship that they have with Russia in, uh, in order to bring some, uh, some logic and, uh, you know, some kind of logic into Russia. All what we need is some logical intervention. Mm -hmm. I know we're sort of tackling some questions here this morning that isn't in our perfect wheelhouse of expertise, but nonetheless, certain moments compel us to think beyond that. And one of them for you, as you addressed earlier in your earlier point, is the, you know, the, the China move on Taiwan, perhaps, and so forth. Uh, I mean, the question I have for you is, how long, or is this a moment where the Gulf and the Middle East, but let's say the Gulf, because that's where we are, have to step away from what appears to be a somewhat of a double standard. They're happy to embrace China and Russia, who have an ongoing relationship with all sorts of fellows, particularly Iran, but yet America and the West is not allowed to have a relationship with Iran. And when they make gestures like the JCPOA, they get a lot of harassment from that. I'm wondering your position, your views on that line being maintained at a moment like this, when clearly there's cracks emerging in the geopolitical picture. Well, you know, I think the, we have no other option, Sean, but to play this balance act between Russia, China, and the US. Now, the harassment you are talking about was a result of that the original GPS, the, the original agreement that was signed, was signed in complete absence of the whole region. We were not involved in any of the discussions. We really didn't know what were they discussing and we had no presence whatsoever. So that's why when the second opportunity came about, we said, okay, listen to us. We are, we are the people who are facing this uh, directly. So why we are not being listened to, why we are not, we don't have a seat on the table. And this is why there was, but in, in reality, we, we are not of that, you know, and the GCC have never been that party that harasses anyone. We are- Well, harass perhaps is the wrong word, but <laughs> facilitates the idea that Russia and, and China can have relationships with everybody, uh, but the West cannot. 
Well, you see, our this political role on an international scene is really recent for the region. We have not been a major player on those type of discussions. You know, we've never been. So this is a new role. And I think so far in multiple fronts, the region have been doing extremely well in bringing people uh, together and trying to work out solutions. But are we going to be effective in driving you know, the, the, this international agenda of peace? And, and this process, I think they will try their best, but you know, it's all in the hands of the Europeans and the Americans, really. Just sort of taking it a little bit further down the, 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 the time corridor is clearly at these prices, this is a, a, an incentive and a, to invest more in new capacity. I'm wondering uh, if you're seeing that already, this going forward. Obviously, we've got UAE have publicly announced a few times that they are targeting 5 million and so on. Your thoughts on where the Gulf is in adding that new capacity at the, in this current window of time, obviously not today or tomorrow, but you're on mute, Sarah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so the first thing I want to say is, you know, the reason behind OPEC plus is gone. So they were managing the market because they had surplus, because they were trying to create stability by managing supply. But that really is gone now because the, the, the price is high. It's, where, it's more than where they wished for. There isn't much uh, you know, uh, supply storage and uh, availability in, in any of the countries to be able to manage the market going further. So the rationale behind OPEC plus probably is much weaker at this point in time. I wonder if it will continue as OPEC plus or they will go back to just being OPEC and to normal business. But the second point is their drive to invest more into the industry, definitely. Definitely each single country now is gearing up to invest because they see this as probably the last cycle of high prices where they can monetize some of the assets that they have. So you will see frenzy of activity in every single GCC, Iraq, Iran probably as well, in trying to develop the resource as quickly as, as, as they can. But as you know, there is certain limitation on capacity. And think about it, at this point in time, to build any new facility, it will cost you a lot more simply because of supply chain, inflation. Think about all the other factors that are going to come into play. Availability of subcontractors that can do all these jobs that are lined up in each of these countries. So yes, there will be frenzy of activity. Are they going to achieve the production targets on the timing that can serve this current environment? Typically, it takes three to five years before you can add serious production in any of these countries. So, yes, I, I, I definitely see a lot of projects. But you, you could, for example, uh, rehabilitate the neutral zone in Kuwait quite quickly. Well, it is rehabilitated. It is in production now. You know, they added the... Uh, added but 150, the maybe you could get up to 450. Yeah, there is potential there probably it will take uh, around two years to, to add that potential. So it's not that easy. Uh, you know, most of these oil fields, especially the brown fields, they will take more activity in order to get them the type of production. There is some small pockets, but can it satisfy the world demand? I really doubt it. Sarah, do we get through the day today with the Middle East, the Gulf states remaining silent, saying nothing? We've had China already come out saying, oh, we should give uh, Ukraine and Russia the chance to sort out their own problems. Well, I think uh, in the Middle East, they will, they will have some kind of statement, you know, but uh, it will be more neutral and balanced. Like I said, they will not- Like Fox sides. News, sounds like. <laughs> yeah. So they will not take sides at this point in time. They will see the direction first. But going to the point of sanctions on, on Russia, um, on the energy sector, I wonder why would anyone shoot himself in the foot? That will be sanctions on Russia. So it's very, very illogical. I've seen Which is ultimately the, 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 the sort of ace card that uh, Putin has. Any step against him is a kind of own goal. Absolutely. So 
I, I don't see any point in, 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 in putting any more sanctions on Russia and the effectiveness of any sanctions at this point in time. It's only harmful to, to the West themselves. It will create more instability, economic instability in Europe. Because if they don't have access to gas, you know, economically they'll be suffering. So what's the point of weakening themselves in a crisis? 